Good morning guys, welcome to my classroom. This is my morning prep period and I'm looking at some of my resources for teaching the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and I promised that I would share a few of these things with you. So this year I'm teaching sixth grade ancient history and I just wanted to find like an entry point into ancient history because it's so massive, there's so much to cover. We're looking at ancient civilizations. And as a historian, I'm just so used to having to have some kind of a methodology or a lens that I'm looking at things through. So I have always wanted to use human rights as a way to look at ancient history. And I taught like a little unit on the Universal Declaration of Human Rights to my sixth grade English class a couple years ago. It was just right at the end of the year. I kind of put together my own unit and taught it as like a reading and writing unit. And it was awesome. I loved doing it. I loved teaching it. And so I thought I could expand upon it a little bit this year and kind of let these ideas kind of flow through the entire school year. So it's tough to get started though if you don't know where to look so let me show you some of the things that i use to get started so um youtube videos are great i i just looked up a, a couple more but I, I still think my favorites are the ones that i have used with my class already so i will link these down below and then i'll put up a blog post as well where i have these videos linked in there. But I start with this video called The Story of Human Rights and the channel that it's on, it might be on multiple channels, it's called Ultralized. And this is like a 10 minute long video, it's really good. So before I show the video, I just ask my students, what are human rights? What do you think some of the human rights are? And they usually don't really know and they can't really explain it, but it's fine because when you show the video, it starts out with adults in some urban area, it looks like New York City or something, and that's what they're being asked. What are human rights? And most of them are like, mm, I don't know, is there like a list or something? And most of them have never heard of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So your kids feel a little bit better <laughs> and you realize that like most people don't know about this, so it's really important to learn about. And then the video is really cool. It kind of um, pans back to ancient history and Cyrus and goes through all of these civilizations and talks about how, you know, if you were in power, you just gave rights to the people that you liked, but everybody else was just on their own. And then it kind of starts just quickly flipping through like the Magna Carta and then like the Declaration of Independence and the French Revolution. And it works its way up through World War II and the horrors of World War II and then talks about how the UN came together and Eleanor Roosevelt led this council to make a list of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights that could apply to literally everyone on earth. And then it's kind of interesting, you know, it says, okay, and then everyone lived happily ever after and the kids kind of giggle and they say, except not everybody follows these human rights. And you know, if we have the right to education why are there a billion adults that can't read? If we have the right to a decent standard of living, why do kids die from starvation every single day? It's like, it's a really touching video. Like even just thinking about it, I'm like, Ugh. And so every time I show it, I've shown it dozens of times. I've seen it many, many times. And it just, it gets you every single time. So this is, this is an emotional thing to teach about. And that's fine with me. I normally like, you know, emotional things in my own life I don't like talking about, but emotional things in the world, I definitely, I will go there. So this video is really, really good. It ends and the kids are just like, what? So you talk about it a little bit afterwards and things that they noticed. I always ask, what was the event that made the UN necessary and like made the Universal Declaration of Human Rights necessary. What led up to this? And they usually know a little bit about World War II, not a ton, so we just kind of briefly skim through that. And this year, I mean, uh, you know, when you talk about World War II, you use the term Nazis, and so then they were asking like, wait a minute, if that was back in World War II, why are people talking about Nazis today and what's a neo-Nazi? So we had to go into that a little bit as well, and that is, complex but really necessary to understand you know if there were people who decided that you are not worthy of existing we are going to exterminate you you do not have the right to life 
that's scary and we want to definitely watch out for people who are following that ideology again so anyway that one's really good but it doesn't actually give you the list of the human rights but it's i kind of like that it doesn't because it kind of piques their interest and it gives me a place to stop discuss a little bit and then um i i ask them okay so what do you think some of these human rights are and they they list some of them and some sound you know really similar to like our bill of rights so sometimes they'll say like the right to bear arms and you say well no that's not a, a human right but some of them overlap with our bill of rights and some of them don't some of them are different so um, then we show the the next video so um, this one is just called the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and it's by Human Rights Action Center and this one has no dialogue over it no voiceover um, it's really cool the way that they do the video it just has like a song in the background and then like the words of all the different human rights kind of like move and show up and the words themselves kind of like create images that represent what the human right is. And that one's really cool. It's shorter, it's like two and a half minutes. So that goes through all of the human rights and then at the end of that one, you know, I ask them, um, were there rights that were surprising to you? Were there rights that you predicted would be in the list or you know, any other comments you have about the rights? And that is pretty much a, a full day of class if you have you know like 45 minute to an hour periods um, the one other thing that we were able to add to that day is okay it's kind of hard to find a list of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and the official list is in what? <laughs> turn off my phone um, so the official list is it's kind of written like the Declaration of Independence where it, it's difficult to understand so I always find an abbreviated list I don't know why these are so difficult to find but I found this one this time and now I'm like looking back through my history and I can't figure out where I got it but I, I will find it I think I just looked for like images like Universal Declaration UDHR I just call it UDHR because it takes so long to say um, I think I just did like an images search and then I found this and so this list only has 25 human rights there are actually 30 and I think this condenses them a little bit and I think it kind of puts them in a different order which is fine it's kind of interesting actually to see different sources on the UDHR because the kids start to notice like oh wait they said it this way they said it this way and so it, it's just kind of interesting to to see that they're noticing that so this one is a good list I will link this below it's weird that it's only 25 and not 30 but um, maybe with like high school I don't even I don't even know about high school definitely college kids you could use the real list but you want to find some kind of like an abbreviated or condensed version for like middle school kids so then the next day I have them create um, like bumper stickers I just cut a paper in half this way and assign one right to every student and they um, they write it out and add kind of a little graphic and I just want it to be really visible I have a, a Bulletin board in the hallway that like belongs to me, you know I can put student work up there. So that's what we're gonna have our first Bulletin board be is the Universal Declaration of Human Rights So they worked on those over the weekend and I'm gonna collect them today So I'll show them to you in a minute and then um, a couple years ago when I did this I also had my students make those and I kept them on this like big like science fair project board so i'll show you that in a second as well but i really like this i like to have the collection of all of them and obviously i have more than 25 students so i think what i'm gonna do is just you know there's maybe three people that did right number one and three people that did right number two and so i'm just gonna look at all the number ones and whatever is the best number one that gets to go up on the bulletin board and the best number two like the one that is the most visible i mean everybody will get points for it but i think with bulletin boards like that that's just what I'm gonna have to do it's kind of weird I think that's what I did with the last one too I think I had two different classes do that project and I just picked the best one <laughs> of each right so do whatever you want to do with that um, so that was kind of the next step that we took it to you can have each student do like just a mini presentation on their right if you want as well and then I was out at a training yesterday, and so I, I found this article on Newzella. It's called Human Rights Questions and Answers, so I can link this down below, but you're going to need 
uh, Nuzella subscription. Oh, I'm wearing my Nuzella shirt today. Didn't even, I didn't even do that on purpose. I'm just uh, setting my kids up with Nuzella today. My sixth graders did not have their Chromebooks until Friday, and then they were like all dead, and then I wasn't here yesterday. So we're starting Chromebook stuff today. I'm gonna get them set up with their Nuzella uh, passwords and accounts and everything, so I wore my shirt today. So anyway, since they didn't really have them yesterday, I just printed out a class set of this article, and this is pretty good and gives some different information. So it's, it's nice to pull information from mul multiple sources. And this one is by Human Rights Watch. And let's see, it just talks about what are human rights, how are they defined, how are human rights enforced, because that's the thing, it doesn't have the power of law behind it. You don't have to follow this list of human rights if you don't want to. Other countries won't be friends with you, maybe, and they might hit you with sanctions, but it's not something that you have to do. So, you know, that's the hard thing about it is that you want people to be good, but you can't make them be good. So this is a really good article, and then there was a quiz that went with it, so they'll be turning in the quiz today. So what is the date today? This is August 29th, 2017. So one thing that my students have noticed already, and as a teacher, I'm very careful not to plant ideas in their mind or try to persuade them in any way. I try to keep all of my views completely separate from my teaching. I mean, obviously it's my view that I think that, you know, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights is important. So, you know, it's not completely sterile because that's impossible, but um, my students are smart and they have started to notice some of the things in this list. So one of them in the abbreviated version says, you can travel wherever you want. So I've got 11 year old sixth graders saying, if you can travel wherever you want, how do we have this travel ban going on right now? And I don't know the answer. I, I don't know that our government officials are real familiar with the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. They might not be. And since it doesn't have the force of law behind it, you can't say, well, oh, well, you know, that's against the law because it isn't against the law. But it should matter that we we signed this document. I mean, I don't know if, if the United States wants to like pull out of this document or something, pull out of this agreement, but um, there are a few things in here, like you have the right to seek asylum in another country if you're being persecuted in your own country. This isn't applying to US immigration policy, this is a human right. So I just think that it will be great to have leaders coming up in this world that know about this document, that know about this concept, and whatever field they go into, whether they go into politics or they go into business or the medical field or whatever it is that they do, maybe they're lawyers or something, to have the knowledge of this I think is very important and to be able to um, kind of apply this to changing current events I think is a really useful skill and it will be interesting to see how we can apply this to the past and you know, we can always be very critical of the past sitting here from the present and not having to actually deal with it but in a non really judgmental way, it'll be just kind of, it'll just be kind of interesting to look at ancient civilizations through this lens because some did provide like rights to some of their people and people kind of experimented with human rights and, and that's part of civilization and culture. So I think this will be really interesting. So as I do more, I will make more videos and share more information with you. I'm just kind of starting this from scratch and just seeing where it goes. But so far, I really, really like it and the kids seem to be really into it. So it's pretty fun. Let me show you my um, board over here. This is what my students made a couple of years ago. They did such a good job. I love this. I need to find the list that I used with them because this is um, the correct order and everything. So they did such a good job. I used this for my Bitsa presentation because I hated Bitsa with a passion, but getting to work on this really <laughs> redeemed it for me. So I was excited to um, present what my what my kids had done Hi. 
I'm working on a bulletin board out in my hallway, like right in front of my classroom, on the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. I just used like blank pieces of paper just to kind of guess like how much space I was going to need. And then I kind of did the introduction up there. And then this is my History 6 class. So I'll be working on this as the kids turn in their little papers.